Hi everyone and welcome to today's Chrissy B Show and we are the UK's only programme that's dedicated to your mental health and well-being. So a parent's worst nightmare is the loss of a child and today we hear from Melanie Lee talking about her son Matthew, a bright, funny, happy young boy whose dream was to be a comedian. However, his life started to change at about 18 years of age when physical pains and sleeping issues took him to see the doctors seeking help. Now, a psychiatrist deemed Matthew was suffering psychosis and he was sectioned for assessment. But tragically, Melanie never saw her son again and has launched a petition demanding a public inquiry. And she's not just doing this for her son, but also for other people like her son. She'll be interviewed by our resident guest, Anna Kennedy. Also on today's show, we have our resident clinical psychologist, Dr. Mihara Kraus, about dealing with a sudden and unexpected loss of a loved one. News correspondent Helena Shard brings you positive reports in this week's A Helping of Happy. And we continue with our mental health dance challenge, this time at Holy Cross Primary School. Then it's aromatherapy time with Tisseran expert and founder of From the Seed, Joe Kellett. She'll be showing us which essential oils to use and how to boost our immune system. And Dr. Opix will be answering your medical questions, including one from a viewer who seems to have developed an allergy, allergy to his cat. And finally, our nutritionist Severine Menem will be here to show us different types of teas and why they are good for us. So let's start off with Anna Kennedy and her guest, Melanie Lee. Hello everyone, it's great to be back here on the Chrissy B Show. Um, I've been a busy bee as usual. We're preparing for Christmas already. We're looking at our Father Christmas to come for our families again in December. We're also preparing for our Autism Hero Awards and the Zumbathon where mums and dads can just let their hair down and have fun. My guest today is Melanie Leahy, who I met on social media. Welcome, <laughs> Melanie. Thank you. And we have a mutual friend, Paula McGowan, who's fighting for NHS mandatory training because of the loss of her son. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about who is Melanie? Where are you from? I'm from Essex. Wow. Okay. I um, do a lot of work in Essex, do actually. You? Yeah, we've got charity champions and ambassadors in Essex raising awareness. Great. So I believe you're an electronic engineer. Oh, for my sins, yes. So. I've moved on and uh, obviously um, the situation has changed my path somewhat. Mm -hmm. So tell me um, a little bit about your son and why you're here today. Okay. Well, I want to say first, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm, oh, I'm here today really to... Um, promote a petition that I have run in for, I'm asking for a public inquiry okay. um, into my son's death. Okay, and tell me a little um, bit about your son and how it got to this stage. Okay, so Matthew, um, <laughs> it's hard to talk, but hey, Matthew, Matthew was um, my world at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, he died aged 20 years, um, having had a short seven day um, stay in a psychiatric ward in Chelmsford. So why was he in the unit? What led him to be there? Um, I guess about 18, 19, mm -hmm. he, he started having some, some issues and um, he, I didn't know at that time he'd actually been to the doctors and been given a drug called Zopiclone for sleeping. Okay, so he's having sleeping problems. Uh, yeah, um, he, he'd, he'd done all his grammar school, um, left, um, started his own business and things were going great for him. Mm -hmm. um, and then business was a bit slow and there was depression setting in. and. He's he's gone to the doctors asking for some help. Got some zoppy claim, mm -hmm. and the next thing you know is he's saying he'd got stomach pains. Um, uh, he was starting to have terrible nightmares. Okay. Um, anyway, he he ended up having the first admission in 2011, um, and the doctors deemed him psychosis. Okay, um, and. It's not till, and then he had another, this second admission in 2012, um, and within seven days he was dead. So he's, he was found hanging day seven in his room, or in the room in the hospital. Um, I just can't even imagine how he must be feeling or <laughs> was feeling at the time. So how many signatures have you got on the petition so far and what's the feedback been like? Oh, amazing. Um, I've, we're up to 27,000. And how many do you need? <laughs> 100,000 plus, okay, please. Okay, so we want the viewers to sign the petition. Yes, sign the petition. That's it, .co.uk. Yes. And it's on um, Facebook? And on Facebook, um, Justice for Matthew Leahy. Okay, now would you spell uh, Leahy? L-E-A-H-Y. So if you can 
search for that and then sign the petition, Melanie would be eternally grateful. I would. And I'll tell you, when I go only 27,000, I think nearly every single one of those has sent me a message okay. of support um, because so many so many family members have been failed and they, they're continuing to be failed, you know, and we need changes made. So tell me a little bit more about Matthew. Obviously, he was your son and you loved mm -hmm. him and you've lost him. So how has it affected you as a family? Um, it sorted, it sorted everybody really. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard to, to judge, but like my, I know his grandfather is actually broken. His father's broken. I'm consumed by this petition. I'm consumed about anyone just trying to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was my only child. So all my dreams for the future, you know, his girlfriends often, like every birthday are, are sending messages and just, remembering him every year and you know they've gone on and they've they've met other boys and now had babies and yeah it's just awful because you just think yeah you know all the dreams that you had for and so how do you get over something like that because obviously he's your son and that i, I just know, I don't, don't even know how do you get through each day you don't get over it you just i, I just each day is like someone else because they're messaging me someone else has got a problem with their child and i try and i put myself into that okay. and try and help them um matthew would have wanted to help others he loved the water he loved boats and we actually lived on a marina and he spent eight years of his like the first eight years of his life living on a boat okay um but he was a lifeguard and two ladies had gone rowing out to their boat one night and they fell in he rescued them oh wow um so i can i'm proud to say that that even you know when he was alive he saved lives and i think even in death he will do that too i just want to say thank you so much melanie for coming along today and for sharing your story i know it must have been difficult if people are interested and they want to sign the petition yes. remind everyone where they need to look there's two places www.signthepetition.co.uk okay. Well, easy. Or you can go onto the Facebook page, Justice for Matthew Leahy. Spelled L-E-A-H-Y. Okay, so please sign yes. the petition. Uh, we need 100,000 signatures before November the... 23rd. So not long to go, so please sign the petition. We need to have this debated in Parliament. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much to Anna and to Melanie there. So now it's time to head over to Dr. Nihara Kraus for this week's Psychology Matters. Hello, I'm Dr. Nihara Kraus and I'm the resident clinical psychologist on the Chrissy B Show. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, a very difficult experience, which is about the sudden loss of a loved one, um, particularly a child. Now, there are two things that are really important here. The first is the suddenness of the loss, and the second, of course, is the loss of a child. So when you do have a sudden loss, um, the usual process of having a bit of time to prepare, having some information is taken away from you. And when that happens, um, a person can go into shock for a very long period of time. They can feel very angry uh, and that anger may well uh, take quite a long time to get over because they might feel angry about what's happened, they might feel angry about people involved in it, they might feel angry towards themselves. And all of these emotions get in the way of being able to grieve. Um, sometimes families can get very stuck with regards to this and it can bring about a whole range of feelings from feelings of guilt uh, to feelings of worry about what they might have neglected uh, to perhaps not being able to uh, rest or relax to being very anxious and indeed to becoming depressed. Some tips in terms of dealing with this would be to try your best to um, think about focusing a little bit on yourself, to try and think a little bit about uh, things you can do uh, that will support you, uh, think a little bit about other members of the family and um, focus on um, what you might be able to do with the emotions that you have. So rather than using the anger that you feel against yourself, perhaps 
perhaps use it to promote uh, some sort of activity that will enable you to get uh, a good result, a positive result. Back to you, Chrissy. Thank you very much to Nihara. So after the break, news correspondent Helena Shard brings you positive reports in this week's A Helping of Happy. And we continue with our Mental Health Dance Challenge Tour, this time at Holy Cross Primary School. people to think they have to learn to live with depression. I know there's a permanent cure and I know sometimes many people hear that you know you can manage depression or learn to live with it and that's something that I totally disagree with because depression is such a horrible thing to to experience and to live with on a day-to-day -day basis because I've been there and I know but I also know that there is a solution a permanent solution. Depression has always been something people say it's incurable, once you get depressed you'll never be free of it, but it's not true, you don't have to manage it, you can get rid of it and that's why it's payback time. Obviously I'm taking uh, a couple of these books today uh, to sign copies in order to, to give it to some uh, relatives of mine. I know that this book will progress, yeah it's about time, it's about time, it steals too much time for people's lives, yeah it's about time. together because the dance actually shows the fight against depression so as you know you've got some punching moves in there you've got that that you know throwing throwing out anything that's negative so when you're actually doing the dance just remember that the reason behind it is it's like you saying I don't accept to be put down by any kind of problem and I'm gonna fight back we think it's a really really important thing for them to be aware of being um, mentally and emotionally well as well as succeeding with their academic success so when we heard about this dance we just thought it was amazing we like to encourage students to open up if they are going through any problem and, and let them know that it's okay to, to talk that it's okay if you're going through a problem it's not nothing to be ashamed of waving the flags I think it's like saying to your worries go away and don't come back I found the dance, I thought everybody enjoyed it because it could represent our big and small feelings. Stop, stop, stop! Stop, 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 step back and point away! Step and crush! Step and crush! Step and crush! Do you think this challenge is so important? I think it's very important because it's a very interactive way for young people to take part and know the stigma around mental health and actually make a change. Um, it was really energetic and everyone took part in it and really got in there. I think it's more important because of the actual mental health, not like going on the telly, like the mental health part because it's quite important, like if you just ignore it then a lot of bad things could happen. I think it's really important in our school we do take it seriously. Our children are really young but obviously we want to talk to them about feelings and to recognise the different feelings that they have. to present you with our official Chrissy B Show Participative Certificate. Thank you very much. Well done. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody. So now it's time for a helping of happy with Helena Shard. Hello. 
Hello, I'm Helena Shard and I'm happy to bring you this week's inspirational news. So, beginning with big congratulations to James Middleton, 32, on his engagement that's up and coming, and also for him to, uh, opening up and sharing about his battle with depression and really talking about Kate, Kate Middleton, his sister, who's really helped him get through everything and, and has attended therapy sessions with him. So it's a really nice family little story. Um, also, he was explaining how he felt like a square peg trying to fit into society's round hole. Um, and now, after a year of therapy, he feels like he's been reborn, so um, is ready to sort of start his life again. And it's, it's great that he's sharing it with the world. And interestingly, one of the things he talks about is his emotional rock, Ella, his Cocker Spaniel, who really is his therapy. Um, and as such, he's now ambassador for a charity, Pets as Therapy, um, to raise awareness about the, the effect that pets can have um, on owners' mental health. So thank you, James, for sharing your story and wishing you lots of luck with your up and coming wedding. Talking of the healing effects of pets, um, onto the healing effect of the wild Boto dolphins. Um, these are pink dolphins um, and they're giving people their lives back via Boto therapy. Now these, these dolphins are pink, which is amazing in itself, never known about pink dolphins. Um, and a physiotherapist uh, is working in Brazil on the Amazon River with more than six, he's helped more than 600 children over the past 13 years. He does it for free um, and finds it hugely rewarding. So he helps them swim with these dolphins each month. And the children range with different physical and mental disabilities. And it's amazing to see their eyes glinting and they really, really develop and it gives them a sense of achievement. And one of his success stories is a young chap called Leo. Um, he came to him when he was seven years old, born with no arms and different lengths of legs. He wasn't able to walk, but swimming with the dolphins has given him this huge um, new independence and he views the, the dolphins as his friends. So it's a really lovely story. He, he began to walk straight away after swimming with dolphins and now he feels completely unstoppable. Age of 21, he's passed his driving test and he's doing so, so well. So that's a really lovely story. Now another story about a man who's worked towards new independence and this is the bag designing man on Birmingham's, Birmingham streets. He's a homeless man, he sold more than 200 bags, they're self-designed canvas bags and he's Kev 44 from the West Midlands. Um, he's been homeless for five years and he started this, it's called the bag issue, which is a bit like the big issue, a take on it, with the help of a very uh, kind man who has donated loads of canvas bags um, to him. And it's an ongoing project where he obviously designs the bags and uh, members of the public donate money for them. Um, he suffers from anxiety and depression and the, the project has taken his mind off of, of everything and given him a purpose, an opportunity to get back on his feet. And it really makes his day when he sees customers and they chat to him um, and they just show their appreciation for his bags. So simple um, kindness, which is lovely. Moving on, uh, so from one resilient chap to another resilient, well-known lady, um, actress Selma Blair. Um, and she is a fabulous woman who has been talking on social media. She uh, has been feeling ill for the past seven years, but doctors wouldn't take her seriously. Um, she was exhausted, shaky, dropping things. Doctors, uh, her legs felt numb, was in pain. The doctors actually thought she was just an exhausted single mum. She felt ashamed about this because obviously she was doing her best. Uh, seven years on, she has had her diagnosis of MS, so multiple, multiple sclerosis. Um, she, although it's a bit of a, a wake up call, she's actually armed with a sense of purpose now. And she shared her diagnosis just with interviews online, bringing awareness to her MS. But I think her outlook is just so positive, so it's great sharing her story. And she wants to know, despite her MS, she still finds joy um, through everything. And it actually inspires us all, I think, to take one moment at a time and let go of things that we can't control and always find love and laughter in the midst of everything. 
Uh, a local story, I'm going to finish on a fun local story, act of kindness and actually a stroke of ingenious, uh, ingenious, um, yeah, ingenious. Uh, Tim Cameron, uh, a local boy, he was cycling home uh, to Islington and he lost his wallet. Uh, this is a fairly recent story where he's been reunited with his wallet by a very kind guy called Simon Bifor, but he was so clever and this is what's so ingenious about what he did. He, the way he thought about, he, he tried to find him on Facebook, couldn't find him, um, but he made four very small transactions into his account because in his wallet was his bank details. And when you make a transaction, you have um, a little combined message that you can leave, which only is a few digits, but in it, it said, hi, I found your wallet in the road, 0777, that's a number, text or call me. And of course, the first thing that he did, Tim, was look online, found this message um, and was reunited with his wallet. What it's done is it's been retweeted everywhere and it's opened up this really positive conversation about there are some really fabulous, good people in the world and everyone's been talking about how people have been great to them when they lost things. And it sort of gives that really positive feeling because um, all that's good in the world. Well, that's everything for today, folks. Over to you, Chrissy. Thank you very much to Helena. And now it's time to go to Holy Cross Primary School as they do the MHD challenge. Everybody. As you know, I'm Sharon, the family coach on the show, and today we are at Holy Cross School in Harlow to do the MHD challenge. Now, apparently they've been practicing low, so I can't wait to see how they've been getting on. Let's go inside and find out. Very special school, so they're doing a huge uh, amount of things on mental health. So it'll be interesting to see how they're getting on today. about what Forest School is all about. So basically this is where we are every day. Uh, 400 children come out here and they participate in this beautiful uh, area, woodland area, and they get to be free. They do uh, team, team building, it raises their self-esteem, communication skills, uh, den building, we have campfires out here, but most importantly, the children are happy outside. Why is Forest School so special for you? It's because there's fire lighting and and swings and a load of other stuff. I think mental health is such an important thing. It's obviously yeah, in the public eye, in the news all the time. And I do think it's getting a lot younger. Um, you know, there's children experiencing a lot of mental health, a lot younger. And I think it's really, really important that they are aware of their feelings and how they're feeling mm. and that it is OK to talk to somebody to help them. All of us have physical health, don't we? Yeah. yeah? Fantastic, and I bet you know how to look after your physical health, don't you? Yeah. Right, okay. The big feelings I spoke about, they go on for a really long time. So if we're feeling grumpy or if we're feeling sad for a really long time and it doesn't go away, that might be what we call a big feeling. And the big feelings are the ones that get in the way of us playing with our friends nicely. Those big feelings are the ones that get in the way of us learning. Those big feelings are the ones that perhaps get us into trouble because it changes our behaviour and maybe causes us to be unkind and do unkind things. What could you say if you wanted to talk to somebody about a really big feeling that wouldn't go away? So who knows what MHD stands for? Brilliant, so Mental Health Dance Challenge. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So a fantastic way to be thinking about, um, talking about mental health. Now, I'm just gonna explain a little bit about it because Chrissy, she runs the show called The Chrissy B Show. 
And when she was much younger, not much older than you, she had some really big feelings. And those were big feelings that didn't go away. And they started to affect her relationships with her friends and her family. And she didn't know that she could talk to anyone because she felt that if she spoke to anyone about her big feelings, they would just think that she was silly or they wouldn't believe her. But one day she decided to talk and when she did share her feelings with somebody, they helped her. Punch, punch down, punch, 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 punch down. I'm a winner, ready to start again? It would be excited for everyone to know that you don't need to keep um, all your emotions in your head. You can let it out and tell other people about it. Well, I think it's good for like people who have really bad like stress. Sometimes they think they could just do it and get rid of all their stress and like all their pain and stuff. There's a bit where you punch. Is it ever okay? Even if we've got a big feeling that doesn't go away, that causes us to feel cold and prickly, is it ever okay to punch? No. But in the, in the dance, what we're doing is we're saying, we're punching away all those fears, all those worries, all those big feelings. It's good for other people and you, and you can tell an adult whenever you want to. And when there's something inside you, like let it out and tell, for example, a teacher or adults and something. Stop, 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 step back and point and wave. Forward. Stop, stop, stop. stop. And what was your favourite part of the dance, Vaughan? Uh, it would probably be the boxing. It just helps us let out all our anger and not to give up. It's been fantastic today. I've thoroughly enjoyed the children. I've enjoyed mm. myself too. All the practicing and everything has been great. And so everybody, it's been wonderful here at the Holy Cross School. And now what we're going to do is pre to present our certificate. So it gives me great pleasure, Mrs Gallagher, to present the official MHD certificate challenge completion to Holy Cross School in Harlow. Yeah! There's definitely something in this forest school business. It's absolutely gorgeous. And having spent the afternoon with the children doing the MHD challenge, I'm definitely gonna look after my wellbeing by spending some time in this hammock. So while I relax, back to you in the studio. Well done to everybody at Holy Cross Primary School. So after the break, Tissa and aromatherapy expert and founder of From the Seed, Jo Kellett, will be joining us. Now she'll be showing us which essential oils to use and how to boost our immune system. And Dr. Opix will be answering your medical questions, including this one. I seem to have developed an allergy to my cat. What can I do? Find out the answer after this break. It's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay not okay. I teach people to see depression as an enemy, not as a friend. I'm always going to be speaking about how you can actually kick depression out of your life and I give tips in the book of what you can do, how you can start to see depression so that you can get rid of it for good. Miss Chris, you've done a good job and you didn't want to keep this help to yourself. You decided to share with everybody. You wrote a book which gives access to anyone who wants to improve. She was able to get out of depression. Now she will be able with the book to get um, not only in the UK but around the world. Because it's time to reveal to the world the truth. If you know anyone who is suffering from depression, then this book is highly recommended. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody. So now it's time to hear from our Tisserand aromatherapy expert and founder of From the Seed, Jo Kellett. She's going to be showing us which essential oils to use and how to boost our immune system.
Hi, I'm Jo Kellett, Chrissy B's resident essential oil expert. This evening, I'm going to talk to you about using essential oils as an immune boosting. So this time of year, it's quite likely that a lot of people fall ill to viruses, coughs, colds, that sort of thing. It's really important to look after yourself this time of year. Of course, it's a multifaceted approach. You should eat well, take regular exercise, drink plenty of water and get a good night's sleep. What's also really good is to have regular massage and having an aromatherapy massage with essential oils is only going to enhance the benefit. It's proven that if you feel well and you feel good about yourself, and massage is really good at doing that, that you're going to get over coughs and colds a lot easier. So how do you find a really good um, massage therapist? Well, I would recommend IFPA, which is the International Federation of Professional Aromatherapists. They have an online register that is done by our area, so it's really easy to find a therapist. But not everybody can afford a massage and not everybody has the time to have a massage. So I've brought three essential oils this evening and I'm going to talk to you about those and how to use them in an Aroma Spa diffuser. So first of all, I'm going to add my essential oils to the diffuser. So as I said, I've got three oils with me today. I've got black pepper, cardamom and lemon. So let's have a look at black pepper first. This is a really fiery, warming, invigorating essential oil, and it has renowned properties that are really good to help with immune boosting. So to my diffuser, I'm going to add two drops. And it's gonna come out of the bottle. There we go, just two drops of black pepper. So black pepper is steam distilled from black peppercorns, just the sort of thing that you have on your kitchen table. And it um, smells like pepper, it's not going to make you sneeze though. Then we have cardamom. So cardamom is also steam distilled and it's steam distilled from the seeds of the cardamom pod. So most people know cardamom as a spice in uh, curries. It's got a really bright, uh, fiery, spicy smell, but it's got a really lovely sweetness to it. Cardamom's also a really good immune boosting oil. And I'm gonna add two drops to my diffuser. There they go. And then I'm going to talk to you about lemon. Lemon essential oil, it's really familiar aromatically. It's got a fabulous, bittersweet aroma. All the citrus oils are expressed. They're not steam distilled, they're expressed. So it's basically all the citrus oils, the essential oil is taken from the rind of the fruit and they're pressed. And I'm going to use four drops of lemon in my diffuser blend. The citrus oils come out really quickly from the bottle, so you need to keep count really well. Now what's really fantastic about lemon, it's got really strong antimicrobial properties. Most viruses are airborne, airborne viruses, microbes, so it's really important to get the essential oils into the air, which is why a diffuser is really effective. So I've put my drops in, let me just recap. We've done four lemon, two cardamom, and two black pepper. So I'm gonna pop my diffuser on. So you can have a diffuser on your desk at work. That's a really good way to get the oils into the air. So you're using them during the day. Or maybe you want to use them at home. You could have it in the hallway. I would recommend the hallway because it's a really um, easy uh, place to have it in your home. Everyone's going to get the full benefit coming in and out of the house. And you're going to get that lovely steam, a lovely aroma coming into your home. So using the essential oils over the winter months can help you fight coughs and colds, try and stop coughs and colds from actually taking hold of you and your family. I hope you enjoy the blend. Have a really cold, virus-free winter. And now back to Chrissy. Thank you. Thank you very much to Joe. So now it's time to get your medical questions answered with Dr. Rob Hicks. Hello and welcome to Doctor's Answers here on the Chrissy B Show. I'm Dr. Rob Hicks. So we have a first question. Is it normal to take a sample from somebody's bones without an anaesthetic? This happened to my granddad during a hospital stay and it was extremely painful for him. Well, first of all, I'm very sorry to hear that he suffered in this way. 
Um, here in the UK, it is usual to use some form of anaesthetic. So it might be a local anaesthetic, and that's when the person is actually awake during the procedure. Or it might be a general anaesthetic, which is, of course, when the person is put to sleep during the procedure. Often people are given painkillers because it can be a painful experience. Um, and sometimes people are given a sedative. This is something that, you know, although they're not going to sleep, they may feel a bit drowsy, they may feel very relaxed. And of course, when you're more relaxed, you're less likely to experience so much pain, if any pain at all. So once again, I'm very sorry that your granddad went through this experience, uh, but I hope whatever the reason for having the bone sample taken for uh, turns out to be a positive one for him. And here on The Chrissy B Show, I love receiving your questions, trying to help you out. And you can send in your questions to doctor at chrissybshow.tv because it's most important that if anything at all is worrying you, you ask about it. Because often there's a simple solution, but if the solution is more complicated, the sooner you get a diagnosis and treatment, the better. So now we've got another question that's come in, which is an excellent one by the looks of things. I seem to have developed an allergy to my cat. My skin gets very itchy around him, my throat goes dry and my eyes water. I try to keep the house spotless, but lately it seems that even if he's not close to me, I still suffer. What can I do? As I can't imagine having to get rid of him. He's part of the family. And there's actually a very good reason for you to see your doctor and, and actually try and get a referral to an allergy specialist because Obviously, you don't want to get rid of your cat, particularly if you're not specifically allergic to the cat. It might be that you're allergic to something else. So the first thing to do is identify exactly what you're allergic to. It's interesting because it's not actually the pet hairs themselves that causes the problem. It's proteins that are in the saliva, in the urine, in the skin dander from pets that actually cause the problem. So when a cat, for example, is grooming itself, it's licking its fur, it's transferring some of these proteins onto the hairs. And what's also interesting is although you keep the house spotless, after a number of months without a pet in the home of somebody who's got a pet allergy, the hairs and the proteins, the allergens that trigger the allergies are still around. It's actually quite difficult to get rid of them. Now, should you turn out to have an allergy to your cat, well, there are some things you can do to reduce your exposure to the triggers of your symptoms. So for example, damp dusting is much better than dry dusting because when you're dry dusting, you're basically just spreading the allergen somewhere else. At least with damp dusting, you're tending to gather it onto the duster. Use a vacuum cleaner that's got a HEPA filter which is very, very important. The other thing is you need to ban your pet from certain rooms. So the bedroom, for example, try and keep your pet off soft furnishings so they can't leave their hairs all around the place, where again, the proteins on these hairs, the allergens, can trigger your symptoms. With regards to the cat or the pet bedding, wash it on a regular basis on a hot wash, and that goes for soft furnishings around the house as well. So duvet covers, curtains, cushions, for example, give those put those through a hot wash. It's a good idea sometimes to, to wash or groom the pet, but this should be done by somebody obviously who's not allergic to the pet. And then using an air purifier can sometimes help reduce the amount of allergen, in this case, the, the protein coated pet hairs within the home. So those are the sort of things to reduce your exposure then, of course, you're thinking about treatment and prevention, and then it's down to antihistamines, nasal sprays, and eye drops. Many people, even if they've got a cat allergy, if they use medication that's available to suppress these symptoms, they can still happily live in harmony with their pet. But as I reiterate, it's very important in the first instance to get checked out by your doctor and to make sure that you are allergic to the pet, to your cat, before you even consider losing the cat from your family and rehoming him or her. And now it's time to go back to you, Chrissy. Thank you very much to Dr. Rob Hicks. So after the break, nutritionist Severin Menem will be here to show us different types of teas and why they are good for us.
I decided on a dance because dance, uh, you know, crosses all barriers. It's very inspirational and it sort of let out the feelings of mental health. The dance helps you express yourself and your feelings and that you can um, tell someone about how you feel except from being scared. It actually aims to encourage people to open up and get the help that they need without the fear of being stigmatised. You can express like emotions through the dance. Everyone should have the right to feel happy. Good morning, are you excited about today? Today we are at Walkman's Primary School. I'm here today with years five and six at St Michael's Church of England School in Bishop Stortford. Hi everyone, today we're here at Hillingdon Manor School. MHD Challenge Mental Health Dance in Studio 68. This is in Hendon School for the MHD Challenge. <laughs> today we're at Oxywood Primary School to do the MHD Challenge. Because I know what it feels like to be depressed and feel heavy all the time, but I also know what it feels like to be on the other side and completely recovered. I, I don't want anyone to have to learn to live with depression and, and other mental health issues when they don't have to. It doesn't matter where you're from, who you are, your age. Everyone can get involved in dancing. No one necessarily remembers their best maths lesson that they've had or their best literacy lesson, but yeah. I think they'll remember their best mental health dance challenge oh, that they've had. What did you think of the dance when you first heard of it? Uh, I thought it was going to be amazing. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody. So now it's time to go over to nutritionist Severin Menem and she's going to be talking about different types of teas and why they are good for us. Hi, my name is Severin Menem. I'm a resident nutritionist and today I'm going to discuss teas and their healthy benefits. There are three types of tea. There are the proper teas, like black teas and green teas, the herbal teas, and the instant of flavored teas. And actually the last one, instant of flavored teas, it's when you look at the ingredients, it's mainly tea, but also a lot of sugar, artificial sweeteners. So we know that's not healthy and I'm not going to discuss it today. So let's start with the, what I would call the proper teas, which are uh, black teas and green teas. So they both um, come from the same plant, which is named the Camilla sinensis, a bush that comes from um, India and China and have lots of benefits. So we tend to drink tea because it helps us with our concentration and our mental stamina. The reason for that is it's got caffeine, just like coffee, but just in much um, less extent. For example, a cup of strong coffee would contain between 100 and 300 milligrams of caffeine, whereas for tea, the equivalent would be only 20 to 60 milligrams, which means that you can have quite a few cups of tea without having this uh, feeling of wildness at the end of the day. But also tea contains um, L-theanine, which is an amino acid that helps you um, being alert but relaxed at the same time. So on top of this mental alertness, tea is also very good for heart health, um, mental health, um, blood sugar regulation, weight loss, and a number of other things. Um, so we've got two types of uh, property, like we call them. Uh, here in the UK, I would say it's mainly black tea and green tea, but we've got also white tea. And the difference between black tea and green tea um, essentially is like, uh, because it's the same plant, it's just the way it's processed. In black tea, the, um, the leaves have been um, oxidized, which means that they've changed color to black. Whereas with the green tea, they've just been dried, which means that they remain the same color. Also, 
Uh, because of this process, it means that in black tea there is a lot more caffeine than in green tea, which is still less than cof coffee, as we mentioned, but it's, it's the difference. Um, and um, lastly, I would mention about um, green tea. Um, green tea and matcha tea, they're both green, and actually it's the same thing. The thing with matcha tea is just like powder green tea, which means that when you have a cup of matcha tea, it's like well, um, you were drinking 10 times green tea. So 10 times more antioxidants, uh, which is really good. So that was what I would call pure tea. So now we're going to discuss herbal teas. And herbal teas basically are teas that have absolutely no caffeine. And contrary to, um, to property, they can be anything from root to, to, um, to leaves to flowers, and um, they're all completely different. And they have a lot, um, slightly less antioxidants, but also they have very uh, strong uh, um, healthy powers, I would say. Uh, it depends on what uh, you would have. You can have it when it's dry or when they, they are fresh. For example, we know that uh, if you have some um, digestion issue, you would have peppermint tea or nausea, you would have um, um, ginger or um, for blood sugar regulation, cinnamon. Here we've got um, different types. Um, this one in the middle is mostly uh, fruit based, so it's dry fruit. And we have, um, what do we have? We've got raspberry, we've got rose hip, uh, apple, and it smells really nice. And obviously because it's sugar, uh, because it's dry fruit, there will be a bit more sugar than just the, the leaves from uh, property. Uh, but on the other one here, we've got um, chamomile and lemon balm. And yeah, it, it looks really nice and it's got like, other properties. So we've got other very famous teas such as sage tea that helps with uh, menopause hot, hot flushes. We've got here now that it's winter, we've got two teas that are really good. The first one is rose hip tea, which is a very high in vitamin C and as we know it really helps with boosting the immune system, but also echinacea that is good that when you're starting having a cold or flu-like symptoms, it helps you get back on track, well hopefully. And um, actually the last one I haven't mentioned, um, it's uh, this tea, which is uh, red tea. And uh, unlike its name, it's not actually tea, it's a herbal tea. It comes from a red bush plant in South Africa that is red, hence uh, its name, uh, its name, red uh, tea. And um, they started to do studies about uh, this tea because um, it's, it's been said to have a cancer fighting property. So it looks like it's uh, what they've been using there is actually true uh, all over the world. So this was a short summary of the health properties of uh, property or herbal tea. I really hope it was helpful for you and you can give it a try. Back to you, Chrissy. Thank you, Severine, and to all my guests on today's program. And if you have a story that you would like to share, please do get in touch with us. We love to hear from our viewers. You can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet or Instagram us at chrissybshow. And don't forget to follow us too if you're not already. And also you can leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. And if you'd like to know more about this program and the history behind it, you can visit our website, which is chrissybshow.tv. And if you'd like to know more about my mental health journey, for those of you that don't know, I used to suffer from depression, panic attacks, phobia of death, OCD, anger issues, anxiety, and lots of other things. And I did eventually get help for all of those issues. And I've been fully recovered now for 22 years with no relapses. So I know that it's completely possible to overcome mental health issues and go on to leave, live a happier and healthier life. I'm very happy today. And now I'm in a position to be able to help others because I have fully recovered. So if you want to know more about my story, you can visit my personal website, which is mylifeafterdepression.com. Until next time.
even though I did put the dance together because the dance actually shows the fight against depression. So as you know, you've got some punching moves in there. You've got that, that you know, throwing, throwing out anything that's negative. So when you're actually doing the dance, just remember that the reason behind it is it's like you saying, I don't accept to be put down by any kind of problem and I'm going to fight back. We think it's a really, really important thing for them to be aware of being um, mentally and emotionally well, as well as succeeding with their academic success. So when we heard about this dance, we just thought it was amazing. We like to encourage students to open up if they are going through any problem and, and let them know that it's okay to, to talk, that it's okay. if you're going through a problem, it's not nothing to be ashamed of. Waving the flags, I think it's like saying to your worries, go away and don't come back. I found the dance, I thought everybody enjoyed it because it could represent our big and small feelings. Stop, stop, stop! Stop, 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 step back and point away! Stand and crash! Stand and crash! Stand and crash! Do you think this challenge is so important? I think it's very important because it's a very interactive way for young people to take part and know the stigma around mental health and actually make a change. Um, it was really energetic and everyone took part in it and really got in there. I think it's more important because of the actual mental health, not like going on the telly, like the mental health part because it's quite important, like if you just ignore it then a lot of bad things could happen. I think it's really important in our school we do take it seriously. Our children are really young, but obviously we want to talk to them about feelings and to recognise the different feelings that they have. to present you with our official Chrissy B Show Participative Certificate. Thank you very much. Well done. Yeah.